Okay, in this video, I'm going to be talking about a new model that has been released by Stanford yesterday called uh, Alpaca 7 Billion. And it's very interesting. They haven't actually released the weights for this, but they've released the details. It's a fine tuning of the Llama model that we can see that came out recently from Facebook and they've fine tuned it on 52K instructions. So one of the things with the Llama model is it's been trained a lot, but it doesn't have a lot of fine tuning in relation to instruction tuning. So this sort of basically takes it to the next level. And it's very interesting that the results that they got. So the data set also they've released for this. So these are the authors that have come out and done this and they've released a data set, which actually is made from OpenAI's Text DaVinci 3. So that's the old GPT-3 model here. And it's really interesting to look at that they've basically gone through and done this and it hasn't even been that expensive when you look at the sort of costs of it. The whole thing has cost basically under $600. And it turns out that Roughly the compute for training the model or fine tuning the model is only about a hundred dollars and the rest of the other $500 is making this 52,000 instruction data set. So they talk a little bit about different kinds of instruction tuning and stuff like that. And the problem they define is that a lot of these things are just not available for them to do research. So obviously a lab at Stanford would like to be able to pull apart the chat GPT and run experiments on it, that kind of thing. And because it's a closed source model, they're just not able to do that. So they wanted to make their own model like this. And this seems to have been presented as an opportunity once Meta recently released the Llama models. So remember the Llama models, I think there's four of them from memory. They've got a 7 billion, a 13 billion, a 30 billion, and a 65 billion model. And they've just gone for the small one at the moment. So my guess is that they may release other ones later on, but th this... 7 billion one is what they've got. They've trained it up on 52,000 examples of this instruction tuning here. This is, this has basically come from an idea of how to make this is from this self-instruct paper, which came up with a way to use the GPT-3 model to generate data for this. This is interesting how they've done it. The amazing things that they say in here is that this shows many behaviors similar to OpenAI's Text DaVinci 003, but it's surprisingly small and cheap to reproduce. So we know that the certainly the original Text DaVinci's were 175 billion parameters. This is 7 billion parameters. So it does seem like a major breakthrough that they've gotten this to work. So they include the full sort of training recipe in here as well. They talk about how they started out. So they're using the sort of some of the starting data from this self-instruct paper, which I think is about 175 human written tasks that they've got there. And they use that to prime the text DaVinci 003 into making this much bigger data set. So this 52,000 data set in here. And that data set they've actually released. So you, know, you don't have to go and pay the $500 to make that. You could actually use that. And then using this, they've then basically fine-tuned the Llama 7 billion. Now, obviously one of the key problems at the moment is that the Llama 7 billion is not open source. There isn't an open source version of the actual weights at all. The code is available, I think, on a GPL3 license, but it's not like we can just download the weights off Hugging Face or something like that. Although the weights may actually be on Hugging Face, the license term is still very unclear about what we can and can't do with that. We know definitely that it's not a commercially, can't use it for commercial use there. So the amazing thing that this thing was trained up using the Hugging Face framework, they've used some of the things to help it, including things like mixed precision, etc. It only took three hours on eight 80 GB A100s, which they're saying costs under $100 on most compute providers. Although nowadays you're finding it very hard to get A100s on a lot of compute providers. They then talk a little bit about evaluating it. And this is for me, the most amazing part of this. So this sentence here, so they basically say, we performed a blind pairwise comparison between Text DaVinci 003 and Alpaca 7 billion. And we found that these two models have very similar performance. Alpaca wins 90 versus 89 comparisons against Text DaVinci 003. Now, if that truly was blind, that's amazing. If people didn't know 
and people didn't get a feel. Like sometimes people can get, you can get a feel for which one's which or something. But if they didn't, that's amazing. That means that they've basically made a model which is tiny in comparison to the GPT-3 models, yet is getting similar kind of performance for this. So this is a really promising thing for going forward. They show some of the examples that they've got here from this. Cool thing. So we can look at the data as well. So the data has been released on GitHub and we can go in through and actually see, okay, what kind of instructions were they using? So they've got this great diagram where they break down. They've got generation instructions of generating a list, generating a sentence, generating a story. They've got rewrite instructions. They've got create instructions. They've got explain things. There's a, a, a quite a number of these instructions in here, summary in here for doing these kinds of things. It's really interesting to look at how they've got this together. And then they talk a little bit about using this and fine tuning and some stuff around the fine tuning and stuff. The cool thing with this is that this is actually available for us to play with. So we can come in here. I will just refresh it because you, okay. So you'll realize that you do need to opt in to their license. So basically this is research only. You cannot use this for commercial use. You can't use what you're making out of it, etc. And we need to understand that this is a typical large language model. There's definitely going to be some harmful content in there that may be toxic that may be unethical, et cetera, at this stage. They don't have any safety models on this, nothing as far as I know. All right, we agree to the term. If you say it says, tell me something about alpacas. So it goes and generates something like this. Maybe they wanted us to do that. So what if I say, tell me something about panthers. And you can see that it's generating. Now you'll notice on the interface, we can upvote or downvote things. So if it gives us a bad response, we can actually downvote. Okay, panthers are large cats native to the Americas. They are members of the Philodide family and can be found in many habitats, including jungles. Okay, oh, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. I'll upvote that one. What if I ask it, panthers or white, black? I can see that this is just a radio interface that they've got set up here. No, panthers are not all black. They come in a variety of colors, including black, brown, white, and yellow. So we're getting very nice, coherent, certainly nice, coherent text out of this. One of the examples they give in there is write an email telling students that they got accepted to Stanford. Let's change it a little bit to telling students that they weren't accepted to Stanford. Okay. So I'm not sure what the temperature of this model is set at. I don't think that's it. we're able to see this. Okay, dear student, we are sorry to inform you that we have made our final decision on your admissions to Stanford University and regret to say that you've been denied admission. We know this is a disappointing moment for you and we wish to assure you that your application was reviewed in its entirety and we recognize the great potential that you possess. Again, we're sorry and we hope you will consider other options for your higher education. Okay, certainly a good, well-written email. Maybe not an email that a lot of students would like to see. What about if we got it to write something sales, right? a sales email about telephones. Oh, we forgot to upvote the last one as well. It definitely helps them whether we upvote or downvote because then they can use this model for doing some human feedback training as they go on. Hey there, looking for a new phone? We've got you covered. Our phones are the perfect. Okay, this is definitely sounding salesy, right? Hurry in and get your phone today. Um, that's good content, right? It's certainly writing it and going through it. So anyway, this is just a quick thing. I will put the link for this and for the blog in the description. Go and have a play with it yourself. Unfortunately, we don't have, they do mention that they do plan to eventually release the weights. So if you look down here, currently they're releasing a demo, which we've just tried out the data set for this and some hyperparameter tuning details, stuff like that. In the future, they plan to release the model and they plan to release the training code, which is going to be a amazing just to have a nice example of that, that we could use for doing training and stuff. So go through it, have a read of the blog post yourself, have a play with the model. Let me know what you think of the model in the, in the comments. And if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments. As always, if this was useful to you, please uh, click and subscribe and I will talk to you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye.